Thanks again for joining us. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the multidisciplinary efforts that go into bringing a COVID positive patient into the operating room. You'll see this video demonstrates the arrival of the patient into the operating room, the necessary preparatory steps that are required, as well as how the patient will properly leave the perioperative area. The operating room receives notice from the surgeon that there is a COVID positive patient needing emergency surgery. The surgeon then contacts the anesthesiologist on call and describes the situation to allow for adequate preparation. As the nurse enters the operating room to begin preparation for the surgery, the anesthesiologist enters the center core and collects the necessary equipment and medications for the upcoming anesthetic. They are brought into the operating room and the anesthesiologist begins the anesthetic COVID-19 safety check along with the anesthesia PPE spotter. The anesthesiologist and nurses enter the donning area and with assistance from the PPE spotter begin to don their airborne precaution PPE. The upcoming induction of anesthesia and intubation is an aerosol generating procedure and a high risk of viral exposure from the operating room team. You will notice here the spotter is assisting the anesthesiologist in proper donning of airborne PPE. If you noticed, in the background, the nurse is also appropriately donned in full airborne PPE. Ideally, donning of PPE will be done one individual at a time to ensure it is done in the safest manner possible to ensure all healthcare providers' safety. The PPE spotter is ensuring that we're following the appropriate checks on the checklist. As you notice here, the spotter has identified an error in our anesthesiologist donning the airborne precautions properly. In her role as spotter, she corrected the mistake, reviewed the proper donning of airborne PPE, and ensured that everybody was safe before we proceeded to the operating room. Once the PPE is properly donned, the patient is sent for, and the nursing and anesthesia staff enter the operating room to await the patient. The porter, wearing appropriate precautions, brings the mass patient into the operating room. To prevent contamination of the hallway during surgery, once the porter leaves the room through the doffing area door, the doors to the main hallway should not be used and are strictly off limits, save an emergency such as a fire. The nurse performs their usual patient identification check and the patient self-transfers to the operating room table. In order to ensure compliance with the main hallway door not being used, the nurse will lock the door and notify people not to use the doffing area by taping that door. At this point, the anesthesiologist conducts a brief preoperative assessment, monitors are applied, and the World Health Organization preoperative surgical safety checklist is performed with the surgeon who is in the sterile core using a two-way communication device. Once the checklist is complete, 
The team is now ready to begin the anesthetic. A plexiglass intubating box is available for use at the discretion of the anesthesiologist. You will notice here there is no drape covering the foot of the box. This is for the purposes of viewers being able to view what is happening inside the box. Once the box is placed over the patient's head, the suction, the breathing circuit, as well as the endotracheal tube to be used is placed inside the box. The anesthesiologist will also place the video laryngoscope handle inside the box. The PPE monitor is available on the two-way communication device, ensuring the necessary steps on the intubation checklist are in place to minimize exposure to the virus. Preoxygenation is begun. Using approximately five liters of oxygen, the anesthesiologist ensures a very tight seal around the face of the patient. Two hands are often needed to accomplish this. The assistant may be asked to administer the induction medications as a result. After pausing the fresh gas flow, the anesthesiologist performs video laryngoscopy in a rapid sequence fashion. The stylet is removed by the assistant and the cuff is immediately inflated. The anesthesiologist attaches the circuit, removes the outer gloves, and after restarting the fresh gas flow and confirming CO2 with the anesthetic bag, begins ventilation of the patient. In the event the anesthesiologist experiences difficulty with intubation, the scrub nurse will serve as a second assistant. The plexiglass aerosol box may need to be removed. We refer you to the Humber River COVID-19 intubation video for further intubating information and procedures. After the endotracheal tube and eyes are taped, a mandatory 20-minute waiting period begins to allow for air exchange in the room. You will notice that all of the contaminated supplies used for airway management are in a plastic bag in a bin. In the event the patient is too unstable to wait for the 20 minutes of air exchange, the surgery may begin provided the surgical team is wearing appropriate airborne PPE. The surgeon and OR assistant enter the operating room from the sterile core after having scrubbed appropriately. You'll notice now the surgeon is being donned appropriately as would be normal fashion and the normal course of the operating room can continue. The exception to this process is the recognition that laparoscopic surgery is a potential aerosol generating procedure. All team members during laparoscopy will be wearing N95s. Once the surgeon has indicated to the operating room that the surgery is complete. The nurses proceed to their end of surgery procedures and the anesthesia team begins the COVID extubation sequence. The surgeon and surgical assistants leave the operating room through the doffing area. This minimizes the number of people in the room for the forthcoming extubation, another high risk procedure. Again, the PPE spotter is available on two way communication to ensure the steps of COVID-19 extubation are followed to minimize exposure. What follows is the extubation sequence. While the patient is still deep and under the plastic drape of the bear hugger, the anesthesiologist suctions the oropharynx and plays an oropharyngeal airway. They will then place nasal prongs on the patient with low flow oxygen. The eye protective tapes will be removed and the emergence will begin as per your routine. If you have two filters in sequence, you can skip this step. If not, you should detach the entitled CO2 aspirating line from the filter. Once ensuring the extubation criteria are met, the cuff will be deflated, the endotracheal tube, oropharyngeal airway, and filter 
will be removed en bloc under the plastic and into the blue pad. The above items will go into the plastic lined ring stand. At this point you should allow for at least one minute before carefully removing the plastic sheet off the patient's face. This is in case the patient coughs after extubation. You will then place the bear hugger and plastic sheet into a plastic lined ring stand. This plastic bag will be secured and disposed of appropriately. At this point you will replace your outer gloves and place a yellow mask over the patient's mouth. This begins the mandatory 20 minute waiting period to allow for room air exchange and minimize aerosolization. This period can also serve as phase one of recovery. At the conclusion of the 20 minute waiting period, the anesthesia and nursing team in separate shifts so as to not leave the patient unattended proceed to the doffing area. The PPE spotter also in appropriate PPE, keeping an appropriate distance, supervises the doffing process to ensure it's performed safely. Though the team has doffed their airborne PPE, attending to the patient still requires droplet and contact precautions. The team leaves the doffing area through the doors to the sterile core, where they will redon contact and droplet PPE before re-entering the operating room through the center core. The patient can now begin phase two recovery. The front doors can now safely be opened. The PACU nurse will enter the recovery room in appropriate PPE from the front doors and receive a handover from the anesthesiologists. In the event that the patient needs to be recovered in another location, appropriate droplet precautions can be used to transfer the patient to that location.